Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again at it with layers, layers, layers. Now I'm going to show you some of the uh, options available in the layers pane of the document options today. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit and get over to the document options for layers. It's about halfway down. All right. Uh, now I did talk a little bit about the free stems and ties, but let's just talk about that a little bit uh, in in more depth, right? So we know that the freeze stems and ties option is what's allowing the Finale to put uh, layer one upwards and layer two downwards in terms of stems and beams in this first measure, right? And we see that layer one is set to freeze stems up and layer two is set to freeze stems down. Um, and as I mentioned before, layers three and layer four are not set to freeze stems, right? So they're gonna take on their natural direction depending on where they are in the staff. Uh, it is easy enough to just uh, change layers three and four to match layers one and two. In fact, I'm going to do that real quick. We'll freeze layer three up, and I'm going to set these settings exactly as they would be in layer one. And then we're going to go to layer four and do the same thing. Freeze it down and make these all the same. Apply adjustments. And when I hit apply, if you're watching the second measure, uh, I haven't changed anything yet because I haven't hit apply. Watch the second measure, and they will flip uh, like the first uh, measure with layers one and two, all right? So that's how you would very quickly just change layers three and four to behave like layers one and two. I'm just gonna undo all of that. All right, um, let's talk about this freeze ties in the same direction as stems option. Now, in the second system here, in the first measure, in first measure of the second system, you'll see that I have some ties in layer one here, and, and they're both going up. That's because this option is checked, and it's freezing the ties upwards in the same direction as the stems. But if we uncheck that, you'll see that the ties will get split as if uh, as if the the uh, freezing of the stems were not affecting it at all, right? Uh, I don't know if that's an option that you'd want to explore to use, but it's there if you want to, and that that's what that does. All right. Um, going on, hide layer when inactive. I did talk about this a little bit in uh, video 12-3 uh, when I talked about hiding layers, but again, just so you know what this is, I'm going to switch over to layer 2 and choose hide layer, and you'll see that layer 2 will go away because I'm not in layer two. I'm currently active in layer one. And if I switch over to layer two, you'll see the layer two notes um, appear. Now there is a problem with this that I'm going to uh, talk about momentarily when I look at uh, another option here uh, later on. So I'll get back to that. But for now, let me unhide that. All right. And uh, floating rests. Now, this is an this this uh, value right here. Negative six steps for layer two, uh, positive six steps for layer one. Um, this is the amount that the rests are being floated above the center line by steps. And you can see in the second measure of the second system here that the eighth rest is higher and the eighth rest for layer two is lower. Right? It's exactly six steps higher for layer one and six steps lower for layer two. And the, the curious thing about this is that this value is pretty much stagnant. It will not change, it will not, um, it's not dynamic, it will not adjust. In, this, in the third measure, you can see where even at the negative six location for layer two, it's still a problem. It still runs into uh, the layer one notes here, right? So they're not dynamic in that sense. And um, I think I showed you how to move rest and, and uh, you know, you will have to do this a bunch if you're dealing with a lot of layers, particularly in piano music. Um, you will have to do some some moving of rests and everything. Um, the one time when it will not actually float the rest is in cases like this, where you can see that I've got in layer one where the uh, eighth rest in between the beams is actually get gets put on the center line, and it's not actually um, you know necessarily on the center line. What's happening is that these rests are floating independently of the uh, floating status of the layer. So if I were actually transpose a this a little bit down, you'll see that, that uh, those eighth rests will keep going down to stay out of the way of the, um, the beams in that case. And if I were to go up, they would move up a little bit back to their floating position, right? Um, so that is a unique uh, property of beams, actually, and has nothing to do with uh, the floating rests in the document options for layers, okay? 
Um, now, obviously, we can change this value. If you think that 6 is too high or too low for layer 2, you can change it to 4. And you'll see that uh, globally, those eighth rests will get moved, right? And change it to 2, and it will move again. Now, I probably would avoid odd numbers, and I'll show you why if I choose 3 right there. It does put the rest in sort of a weird spot on the staff. Um, and it's not exactly the prettiest looking thing. So um, if you're going to change the, the floating rest, I would, I would recommend an even number, 2, 4, 6, or 8 or something, all right? Um, now, an interesting application of this is that if you were to set up layers 3 and 4 to freeze up and down, um, you could actually use a different floating rest status. So if you wanted layers 1 and 2 to have uh, 6 and negative 6, you could have layers 3 and 4 set to uh, 4 and negative 4. Um, that would give you a couple options of where the global position is of those rests. And if you're writing some piano music, then you could take advantage of that and, you know, in certain measures, write in measures 3 and 4, in layers 3 and 4, and other measures, write in layers 1 and 2. Uh, just an option. It's a, it might be a creative way to use the, uh, take advantage of the uh, floating rests in different layers. All right. And going on from there, we have this option, apply adjustments only if notes are in other layers. Now, the adjustments that's being referenced here is all of the adjustments above, so the free stems and the uh, floating rests and everything, right? So with that check, that's allowing Finale to uh, make the adjustments uh, to freeze the stems up in layer one in this case. If I were to uncheck that, um, what, you'll s what you'll notice is that well, actually, uh, let's look a closer at the wording. Uh, only if notes are in other layers. So if we uncheck that, that means it will freeze, it will make the adjustments whether or not there are notes in other layers or not. And in this fourth measure here, you'll see that there are no layer two notes. But if I hit apply, now they go up following the adjustments that I've made, uh, regardless of the fact that there's no notes in layer two, all right? So with this unchecked, this is a, a, a method that you could use to force Finale to place stems in one direction or another. And this could be handy in uh, percussion, perhaps, if you want to force the stems always to go up, maybe set layer three to uh, freeze stems and ties up, and then have this unchecked, and no matter what's what else is going on in the measure, those, those stems will always go up, all right? So that's a, a, another interesting application for that. Um, ignore layers containing only hidden notes. Now, I, you'll see that, oops, let me just hit apply to go back to normal. There we go. Now, you'll see in the third system here, in the second bar, uh, it looks like I only have layer one notes here, but in fact, I did enter two half notes in layer two, So th and I hid them. So there are actually hidden notes in this measure right here. So with that checked, Finale is ignoring those hidden notes and placing these uh, quarter note stems where they're supposed to go. If with it unchecked in layer one, we hit apply, and you'll see that now it's it's uh, taking into account those hidden notes and making those adjustments on layer one, um, despite the fact that the layer two notes are hidden, right? So that's kind of what that option is doing. And then let's talk about ignore hidden layers. Now, what this is supposed to do, <laughs> and I'll, I'll read what the uh, manual says. It says, check, ignore hidden layers to have Finale skip layer options. That's these options, right? Um, if the entire layer is hidden by the hide layer when in active checkbox. Now, uh, if I were to go into layer two and choose hide layer when in active, I'm in layer one, remember? So what's going to happen is you're going to see layer two go away. And um, the layer one notes are going to go back to their normal positioning, right? And the problem is that even if I go switch to layer two and make layer, layer two visible now, um, the layer one notes are still uh, going in the wrong direction in, in this particular bar, right? Now this, I believe that this behavior should only uh, exist if you have this option checked, ignore hidden layers in layer one because effectively what you would want to do is ign ignore, um, you'd want to ignore layer two's hidden properties um, to allow um, these notes to conflict in that way. So with this unchecked showing layer two, these notes should go up. Um, I, I, it's, I'm trying to wrap my head around why this doesn't work and uh, I'm, I'm coming up short, So, but I do think that it is 
it is a, a an error in the in the programming or something. And furthermore, what this should actually read is it should actually read ignore hidden layers unless they're active, essentially. So that if layer two has this hide layer when active checked and you're showing layer one, so layer two is hidden, then the notes would go down in the second me measure. If you're viewing layer two where the note where the layer two notes are now visible, then they would get flipped. It's it's a weird thing. I don't understand it. I think it's I think it's a bug in Finale or a, a broken feature or something. But um, if anyone at Make Music is listening, maybe you can clarify this and possibly fix this uh, situation here. All right. Um, playback we talked a little bit about in uh, video 12-3. So obviously, if you uncheck that, um, it will not play back layer one, or you can choose any layer to basically mute by unchecking that. Uh, there are other ways to more locally uh, mute layers, and uh, for those uh, tips, go back to uh, video 12-3, right? Otherwise, the playback is pretty universal. You know, it doesn't matter what staff, what measure. Uh, if, you, if you mute layer 4, it's going to be muted across the entire file um, from the, if you do it from the layers pane of the document options, all right? And then also mu affects music spacing. Now, that's exactly what it sounds like. If you uncheck this, then uh, whatever layer you uncheck it for is not going to um, affect music spacing. And there's a practical uh, use for this that I, that I uh, want to show you here. If you look on this last system here, I've got s slashes in the, the right hand here, and you can kind of see how they're a little bit uneven, right? And the reason for that is because if you look at speedy entry, you'll see that in layer 4, I've put some, some uh, notes underneath the slashes just to allow some playback, right? <coughs> Uh, w the problem is that Finale calculates these notes in its music spacing, regardless of the fact that it's hidden, right? Um, so the interesting thing that we can do is we can go into the document options, uh, go over to layer 4, and uncheck effects music spacing. Hit apply, nothing's going to happen until we actually respace the music. Select all, uh, command 4. And you'll see that the slashes will become much more even because Finale is now ignoring layer 4 in the music spacing. Now you do have to be careful about this because <coughs> if you do have notes in layer 4 in other places, like I do right here in this fourth measure, you'll see that now it's all squished because it is ignoring layer 4 across the board whether or not the notes are hidden or not. All right. Um, so again, this could be handy if you're only using layer 4 um, underneath slashes in that manner. Uh, you know, that, that could be a way to, uh, you know, fix that situation with the slashes coming out uneven, all right? Um, so that is affects music spacing, and there's one final option there I want to show you, and that is consolidate rests across layers. Now you'll see that this option is a little bit outside of the darker gray box. Um, that just indicates that this option applies to all four layers, right? These The dark gray box is really just for every individual layer, and you can ha have them set differently depending on which one you're selected at in any given time. But this applies to all layers. And essentially what this is doing is that if you have similar rests between layers, uh, it will not float the rests to their floating positions. And this third bar of this system here, you'll, you'll notice that I've got a quarter rest on beat two, and it looks like it's only in layer one, but it's actually in layer two, and they're just consolidated to the same spot. And you'll see that when I uncheck this option and hit apply, it will pull both of those rests out to their um, unconsolidated or their floating position at, at positive six and negative six, all right? Um, so if you don't want to see those consolidated, you could uncheck that, and that will do that globally throughout the entire file. Now, obviously, with that checked, it will only do that with rests that are similar. So in the next bar, you see that I have a quarter rest and an eighth rest. Obviously, it's not going to consolidate those because they're not the same rest, right? So uh, it will allow both of those rests to float. And the interesting thing about the consolidate rests across layers is that it doesn't matter which layers it's considering. So you could have notes in layers one and three where one is set to freeze upwards and three is not set to freeze at all like it normally would. <coughs> it doesn't matter what the freeze state of the layer is. If there's more than one layer and you have the same rest, it will consolidate it to, uh, to that position, right? Um, so that is consolidate rests across layers. 
And finally, let's get out of the document options for a minute. What I want to show you is a couple other things that you can do with, um, with layers. And uh, it's actually in the Finale Preferences. And we're going to go to Display Colors, which I already have selected. Now, you know that uh, you know layer one is black, two is red, three is green, four is blue. You could actually change these, and this is where you would do it. In display colors, there's options for layers one, two, three, four, and you'll see the colors there. So you could theoretically you know, click on the, the color bar here, and you get this color picker, and you can choose a different color, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can choose colors in Finale. And uh, so you could change layer two, you could change layer three, layer four, etc. And this is, by, by the way, is where you would change the colors for some of the other uh, um, elements that uh, change colors. Um, now, there's a couple options related to this. If you check layer colors apply to all layer items, theoretically what's supposed to happen is that the um, all, like elements like smart shapes and articulations and chords and lyrics and everything will take on the color of the layer that they are attached to. So if you had an articulation attached to layer 2, instead of it being black, it would turn it red, etc. Now, for some reason, on my computer, on this day, on my system, this option is not working. I have confirmed with other people that this option is actually working, so chances are it would work on your computer, but for some reason on mine, it does not. And the same applies to this use score colors. If you uncheck this, everything in the, your score is supposed to go black. And again, for whatever reason, it's not working on my computer. But I do know that this function does actually work most of the time. So um, those options are there for you. Uh, for you, probably not for me for some reason. But uh, <laughs> they're available if you want to use that. And then finally, one other thing about colors, which is a, an interesting option, I think. It, if you go to your print menu, now this will vary depending on your uh, particular printer. There is an option in the Finale print options uh, for printing display colors, right? So if you have that checked, and if you have a color printer, um, with that checked, all of these colors will print exactly as they look on your page. So you can actually get red layer 2 notes, green layer 3, and blue layer 4 notes, etc. with that checked. You would also get, you know, red slurs and green uh, expressions and all that and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's an option for you if you want to check those display colors. And uh, practically speaking, I was thinking of a, of a good way to use this. If you were to go into your preferences and say change everything here individually to black except for one element say you, you know uh, um, articulations you you could make articulations red and everything else black in this window and then print colors what you would be doing is you'd be creating a, a good sort of uh, educational uh, worksheet or something if you're if you happen to be working on articulations you can uh, you know you can highlight the articulations by printing them red or something so that would be an interesting way to use that option. Or you could do that with layers too. If you just wanted to show uh, a particular layer in, in a particular color, you could do it like that. All right. Um, so I think that covers it for layers, layers, layers. Um, thanks for watching and uh, come back and we'll look at some more uh, uh, categories soon. All right. Thanks for watching. See you then.